Oh, do I have a great story for you. For everybody who still might be a Puritan when it comes to drug use, and I'd say most people to one degree or another are of that mindset, right? And I'm not saying everybody's like, you know, as harsh as some of the crazy people on the far right who would want to ban even alcohol and pornography and stuff like that. No, no. But people, to one degree or another, think, yes, I want to stay away from these different substances because even if I'm for the freedom to take them, I don't think they're necessarily good for you, right? Well, I might change your mind even from that. This story is just that interesting. So listen to this. This is a list of some of the great minds, flat-out geniuses throughout history, and what their drug of choice was. Interesting. Carl Sagan, the guy responsible for making science cool, remember he did the cosmos? He's a preeminent astrophysicist and cosmologist. He not only smoked marijuana regularly, he was also a strong advocate for its use in enhancing intellectual pursuits. He contributed to an essay to the 1971 book titled Marijuana Reconsidered, and he spoke to the virtues, the virtues of marijuana use. How interesting is that? Neuroscientist John C. Lilly was a pioneer in the field of electronic brain stimulation. He was the first person to map pain and pleasure pathways in the brain. I mean, you want to talk about a big breakthrough? That's huge from a scientific perspective and uh, research that happened after that. He founded an entire branch of science exploring interspecies communication between humans and dolphins and humans and whales. Uh, and he invented the world's first sensory deprivation changer. And what did he do? Well, he uh, engaged, or indulged, I should say, in taking ketamine. Ketamine. Now, funny enough, as I know of ketamine today, it's more of like a party drug, right? People go out to clubs, and I think it's a cat tranquilizer, if I'm not mistaken. But hey, look, a genius neuroscientist, uh, major breakthroughs in science, he was taking ketamine. Go right ahead. I, who am I to judge? Uh, Carrie Mullis won a Nobel Prize in chemistry, frequently took LSD. Steve Jobs, no introduction needed. Uh, he experimented with LSD, and th that was in the 1960s. He said, quote, one of the two or three most important things I have done in my life was take LSD. Oh, it's so incredible, man. This is the exact opposite. We st all have this mindset still of the reefer madness, right? Where the movie propaganda, oh, you'll die if you take any substance ever. Yeah, ever. Really? So uh, why does everybody drink coffee in the morning or have a monster energy drink or drink alcohol, you know, or go to the doctor and get a prescription for Adderall to focus more or take Xanax to relax or Klonopin or Valium? Yeah, it's so not true. It's so not true. I got more. Paul Erdos, one of the most prolific mathematicians who ever lived. He published more peer-reviewed papers than any other mathematician in history. He was hopped up on amphetamines 24-7. He was well known for working 19-hour days. <laughs> By the way, I should probably use some amphetamines because uh, I work 16-hour uh, days. So, Paul, I hear you, buddy. Is he alive? I was going to say call me, but I think he's dead. Um, Thomas Edison was known for knocking back Vin Mariani's, which is a Bordeaux wine treated with coca leaves, the active ingredient, which is none other than cocaine. Francis Crick of the DNA structure discovering Watson, Crick, and Franklin did LSD. And the university's researchers often used LSD in small amounts as a, quote, thinking tool. And Crick, quote, perceived the double helix shape while on LSD. And of course, how could I leave out the granddaddy of them all, Sigmund Freud. To Freud, cocaine was more than a personal indulgence. He regarded it as a veritable wonder drug, and for many years, a huge proponent of its use in a wide array of applications. And in a letter written to his fiancee, Martha, Freud wrote, quote, if all goes well, I will write an essay on cocaine, and I expect it will win its place in therapeutics by the side of morphine and superior to it. I take very small doses of it regularly against depression and against in indigestion and with the most brilliant of success. Freud published such a review titled Uber Coca in 1884. So yeah, drugs are real bad for you.